What do you want people to know about Parkinson's disease? The biggest thing that I want people to know Forty-five years old when I was diagnosed with Parkinson's and it came as a shock out of the blue. There's no family history. And I set my suitcase down and when I set it down my hands were at the side like this and I looked and my left hand was shaking just like this. Well ten days later I went to the doctor and he said hang your jacket up. I hung it up. He said come over here put your hands out. Put my hands out. He looked at me for about ten seconds. He said, you put your coat back on, go home, Mr. Gretz, you got Parkinson. That was three years ago, just about three years ago. I was diagnosed at the age of 27, so almost 18 years ago. And I had just uh, finished my residency in family practice and was expecting my first child. December of that year, I sort of hit the wall. And that's when I went off work and thought, you know, what am I going to do now? The fight against Parkinson's disease found me. I didn't really want it. Didn't really know anything about it. Had no idea really what it was when my grandfather was diagnosed. To be honest, you know, even as a physician, it uh, wasn't the first on my differential diagnosis list. And I feel like there are still a lot of connotations with Parkinson's as being an old man's disease. It's not. Again, I was that young and uh, it's uh, something that's known about, but it really at that time wasn't, wasn't very common knowledge, even to physicians, so. My reaction was, it can't be. I was too young, and this Parkinson's is generally an old man's disease. I was angry. <laughs> I was angry, actually, with the neurologist that uh, diagnosed me because I thought, wow, you know, he obviously doesn't know what he's talking about him. You know, this is not Parkinson's disease. But when he referred me on to probably the top movement disorder specialist in the country, and he said it was Parkinson's disease, it was pretty hard to deny. So the, the biggest thing that I want people to know is that Parkinson's shows no boundaries. At any age, you can be diagnosed, and people are getting diagnosed at younger ages every day. The diagnosis is not within our control, but how we face our future is really ours to, to determine. And that means taking an active role in your management. That means educating yourself. It means making sure you, you have a good self-care routine. Kim came to me um, after she was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease and she needed um, help with her fitness level, her energy level, and overall motivation. Uh, when she came to me, she was very low energy. I felt that she was somebody that I could, I could help, and I looked forward to the challenge. I work out every day, and he trains me every day, and it's increased my mobility, my flexibility, uh, my endurance, and I've also been able to come off some of my medication because it's, it's helped so much. The issue with Parkinson's disease is that there's a very fine line between treatment and side effects. So that managing your medications to the point where you've got relief from your symptoms but you haven't sort of um, incurred the side effects is a, is a challenge for sure. Getting things done um, in a manner that is acceptable to you but is, is um, modified in some ways. I mean, that's hard to accept sometimes. Things take a little bit longer. You have to delegate a little bit more sometimes, you know, or you have to wait until your medications kick in. So being at the mercy of the disease from that standpoint is a little bit difficult as well. My husband was doing research and he came across 
the Light of Day Foundation, which was inspired by Bruce Springsteen. So him being a, a musician and me being uh, trained in event planning, we thought why not put our heads together and that's how our event Let's Shake was born. So when Let's Shake started, the first event, our goal was to raise $8,000 so that my doctor, Jog, could um, hire a student who was going to do some research over the summer. And we were amazed that we hit 25000 The second event drew 650 people and raised about 30000 So the money that we raise goes directly to research under the direction of Dr. Jog at London Health Sciences. And the main goal for us was to put it all into research so that there was an administrative cost coming off. Let's Shake last year, we sold out at 750 people and we raised uh, $42,000. So every year it keeps getting better. I think the biggest misconception that people have is if you are battling any type of ailment that you have to, it has to show on the, on the outside. But a lot of times people are carrying illnesses and burdens and it doesn't show. We have to talk about the fact that it does affect so many more people and it's two degrees of separation. Everybody, whether you realize it or not, knows somebody with Parkinson's. And the thing is when you're young, people have to realize you're still capable and that you still have to work and raise your family. And it means not letting uh, Parkinson's define you um, because we're much more than our disease, we're much more than our label. My dream for people with Parkinson's is a those who have Parkinson's can live a, uh, a comfortable and normal life with uh, Parkinson's and for us to find a cure for all of us that are working together to uh, eradicate this horrific disease and uh, uh, hopefully nobody will have it in the future. My maternal grandfather um, passed away uh, about a year and a half ago now um, after a valiant fight with the disease. I say that it came at our family like a freight train, barreling at full speed. We didn't really know what it was. We didn't know how to deal with it. We closed off. Uh, we tried not to give up. We didn't really know what sources were out there, but we never really gave up hope that there was a cure. And as soon as I started getting involved with the Parkinson Society and expressed interest to join and to help at an organizational level, and eventually became the regional spokesperson for the Central and Northern Ontario branch, you should have seen the difference in my grandfather. Finally, somebody was out there fighting publicly for him, and it has just continued to fuel my fight to bring hope for this disease for the other grandfathers and mothers and aunts and uncles and sisters and brothers out there, and the caregivers, the 100,000 uh, some odd people in the country right now fighting for Parkinson's with Parkinson's, fighting to live a better life. So now I sort of devote myself to patient advocacy and patient education and writing. I do a lot of writing, wrote a couple of children's books about Parkinson's disease as well. Whatever it may take to get them to be, um, to get them to the level of not fearing Parkinson's. So our goal is to raise money for research so that we can find a cure and put these foundations out of business one day and help people with young onset li live fulfilling lives. There are so many incredible doctors and incredible researchers and we're right there. You know we're right there. Happy to stand here for people to be able to ask me how I'm feeling. Anybody who has it just don't give up hope. There's always hope.